surviving the battle on Earth and abandoned by his Saiyan comrades. Raditz is left all alone on a planet with no hope of escape. Meanwhile, the Z Fighters prepare themselves, as Corrin overheard his call to outer space for backup. Will Raditz join the Z Fighters? Or try to find the Dragon Balls for himself in a desperate bid to survive? Lock the like button away in the dead zone before it gets a chance to write a sequel to Dragon Ball Evolution. And follow Tomboy014, the author of the story, on her various social medias listed below. And shout out to nobody, because the stone was pretty much invisible in the last video after being rendered. But find it today and timestamp it in the comments if you want a shout out in the next one. Goku peers out to the road ahead. He wonders aloud how long Snake Way is. As the guide answers, legend has it, it's about a million kilometers. This news comes to a bit of a shock to our hero, asking if anyone has ever reached the end. And in fact, King Yama himself has done it, and in just the last hundred million years, no less. Well, not exactly encouraged, the Saiyan figures if one guy can do it, two guys can do it. When his guide warns, he'd be careful not to fall off into the clouds, as Hell, or Hiffle, is right down there, and he will never get out. Goku goes to mentally prepare himself to begin the long journey, before realizing he didn't even bring a lunch, but is reminded that's not a problem at all. Since he's already dead, he certainly can't starve to death. But he has one last request before the ogre goes, asking if he knows the old fortune teller. And he does. She's always popping in. With a smile, next time she comes here, he wants him to tell her to tell Master Roshi to not bring him back to life for one year. Jotting this information down in his journal, he promises to deliver the message double-checking that all he has to do is not fall off, which is exactly the case. So if that's all he has to worry about, he decides to go by sky, causing the attendant to shout, HEY! being left in the dust. And suddenly all alone, he mumbles that's not fair. With the others back on Earth, Roshi knows they cannot keep this information from Chi-Chi, recommending Krillin go over there and tell her what's happened, though the bravest warrior in the series wonders why him? Bulma, with her infinite honesty, quips is because they don't want to get killed. And glancing back to the other world real fast, looks like Goku used too much power flying, so he's been reduced to running after all. Arriving at his own destination, Piccolo touches down in the middle of nowhere. He steps into a shallow pond still carrying Gohan, before uttering to him, Time to wake up, child. But his words do nothing to open his eyes. The Namekian's irritation quickly swells, so he drops the toddler into the water. Fortunately, this is all it takes to bring him back to consciousness. Choking and huffing for air, he finds himself confused where he is, before turning to the sound of Piccolo's voice. We have to have a talk. Get out of the water. Though laying eyes on the demon, he stutters to know where he is. And whipping his head from side to side, he asks where his dad is, even wading through the water shouting for him, screaming for help, carrying on in such a manner for his cries never to be answered. Until Piccolo's patience runs out through his teeth, he grits the boy here has given him more than enough trouble. Sipping over and grabbing Gohan, he brings them both to dry land. But as a child will, he continues to cry and plead for his father. Silence! Or <laughs> Surprisingly, this threat actually gets the boy to settle down a bit. The Namekian calmly urges he now listen to him. He reveals his father is dead. He gave his life to save his son from that kidnapper. And with a surprisingly lucid concept of death for a four-year-old, this news causes the child to begin weeping once more. Though Piccolo growls, he not even start with that. Assuming he's heard about the Dragon Balls, he explains Goku's friends will gather him and he will eventually be brought back to life. But his death is not the problem. They failed to kill the boy's kidnapper. He's still on the loose and seeks to destroy all life on Earth. Even when Goku comes back, the two of them will stand a little chance. So they need Gohan's power. The child must learn to use his strength to join them in protecting Earth. Of course, this is a completely insane request, even through the eyes of a toddler who stutters he can't fight, though Piccolo assures he has hidden powers within him that he's never even glimpsed towards. Referring to himself in the third person, he is confident that the training of Piccolo will bring it out. Stuck on his beliefs, Gohan continues to insist he has no power and he is lying. So with a sinister grin, Piccolo questions if he wants proof. Grabbing him by the head, he elevates the boy into the air.
Find the power quickly, boy, or turn to jelly against the rocks. Obliterating the rock formation in front of him. That was even more powerful than Piccolo imagined. Though the child sits before the destruction, appearing confused. The Namekian can't help but wonder what's going on, raising the cub who may someday become his most formidable foe. Gohan inquires if he himself did this. It begins to come clear, doesn't it, boy? He elaborates Gohan's power bursts loose only when his emotions are at their peak. And then, just for an instant. As it currently is, it's not very useful. But he will teach him how to use that power all the time. He will make him the greatest fighter ever. And as the Gohan we know end. He pleads he doesn't want to fight. He wants to be a great scholar. Though the name it quells, he be whatever he want. After he's defeated the Saiyan who stole him. If he fails, he'll exterminate everyone on Earth. That would be a crimp into his career plans. As any child would be, the boy argues he's scared. But Piccolo has had enough of his whining, commanding he quit or he'll kill him right now. And discussion time is over, instructing him to take off his surcoat. Complying, he continues his arguments, asking if his dad is coming back to life. He wants to be trained by him. His second kidnapper today tells him that's too bad, as Goku is powerful, but he's no combat master. For instance, look at the way he's coddled him. He doesn't have the toughness that's clearly needed. Speaking of Goku, he runs and runs and runs, little dreaming of his only son's misery. Gohan questions what he does for training, and the answer is nothing. At first, his only goal is to live. The boy curiously inquires, what, live? The demon minutely expands upon this, instructing he survive here, alone. If he's still alive when he comes back in six months, he will teach him how to fight. But panicking, Gohan can't comprehend being alone in a place like this for half a year. He'll die of loneliness. But Piccolo assures he won't be alone. This area is swarming with bloodthirsty beasts, which doesn't instill any additional confidence in the boy. Shouting for him to listen, the Namek barks he doesn't have time for this infantile behavior. Survive for six months, somehow, and learn how to be tough. Mentally and physically, he needs to believe in his power and figure out by himself how to effectively draw it out. He'll need it should his uncle find him here alone. Piccolo ignores the child's pleas, reminding Daddy isn't here to protect him this time, and not to even think about trying to escape, as this place is surrounded by a desert, a world of death that makes here look like a paradise. Continuing to argue, Gohan questions where he gets food, and a bath, and a bed. Those soon-to-be mentor only smirks, asking if he thinks those things are just prepared for him. Taunting, poor little princeling. The gravity of the situation at last seems to dawn on the child. As Piccolo growls if he wants to feel resentment, he should merely curse his own fate, as he himself does. The next morning, Chi Chi and Ox travel over the ocean, her father urging her not to get too upset, but she responds in a less than respectful way. She told them to be back by dark, Clearly, she is still unaware of what has happened. Ox King reminds Goku hasn't been to the Turtle Hut in ages. He probably had a lot of catching up to do and lost track of time. However, this doesn't do much to extinguish the raging fire that is Chi Chi's anger. She spouts, well, goody for Goku, except our son has school. Bickering, Gohan is only four years old, and he can miss a day of preschool without him making any. His daughter interrupts, screaming for her dad to get with the times. It's a competitive world, and it's never too early to get an edge. At Kame House, the unsuspecting Master Roshi has just finished informing the rest of the Z Fighters what has happened. Goku is dead, and his alien, evil, and even more powerful long-lost brother roams the Earth. Initially, this leaves the gang in silence. They slowly begin to speak amongst each other. Tien wonders if this Saiyan is still on the loose. Can a power like that even be beaten? Yamcha puts his focus more on his old friend being dead. When they hear someone calling from outside, who we know to be Yajirobe, he not so politely shouts, Yo! a few times before Krillin answers the door, sarcastically asking if that's a voice or a falling log. The swordsman greets him with a sneer. It clicks with our hero. This is the guy who is at Korin's place. It's your robe, which is quickly corrected, believing he did that on purpose. He tells how Korin overheard that alien guy call for backup, and two more of them are supposed to show up in a year. 
already knowing how in over their head they are. Krillin trembles at the reveal more are coming. What's worse, these new warriors are even stronger too. Korin wants him, and the Yamcha guy, and the Ten something, and shouts you to get over to his place now. As it isn't usual for Korin to invite anyone to the tower, Krillin can only wonder why he would want them all there immediately. On top of taking in the information of two new, stronger aliens also about to invade Earth, what is Korin planning? Tommy's gonna train him. Yeah, Jirobi too. <laughs> <laughs>